And now about the women's participation in it. The spokesman for the Afghan High Peace Council, lawmaker Shahzada Shahid, stated that there will be at least one woman in government's negotiation team. Uh, do you think Afghan women should be satisfied with that? I think it's a start, but obviously <laughs> uh, Afghan women make up at least 50 percent of the population. Mm -hmm. And while it may be too much to expect uh, that uh, a woman, women's presence on that council would reflect that 50 percent composition, obviously there's room and should be more. Mm -hmm. And uh, in your many trips to Afghanistan, uh, tell us about your experience. How did you find Afghan women? What are their concerns? What is their biggest wish? It is my most recent trip. I've made six trips, mm -hmm. and I was la I was last there in May of 2014. Uh, what first my first takeaway was how proud women were of their participation in the elections. That mm -hmm. uh, as one woman said to us, we surprised ourselves uh, that it, that women turned out in such strong numbers, uh, and were so proud to participate. And that in general, those elections went peacefully. So that it led to it took a while. It took a while. Uh, but the elections were peaceful, and it led to the p peaceful transition in government. That's, that's quite a challenging thing, uh, especially mm -hmm. in a government that's just taking hold. So, so much to be proud of, and women were uh, especially proud of it. But the other thing I heard was there's an understanding that we are going to be drawing down our forces there, mm -hmm. that there's an inevitability to that. What the timing will be of the final uh, in the, at the very end of it is, is somewhat an open question. There's obviously a commitment to continuing uh, to training and equip, equipping the Afghan security forces. Uh, there's an understanding that there may be a need for special operations in, in certain instances. Um, but what I heard as much as anything from the many women we met with was that they recognize a lot of change has occurred in your country. Uh, and that many of those changes have focused on women and the right of women to participate uh, economically, the right of women to be educated, the right of women to receive health care, uh, the right of women to be present and have a voice in your government. So they recognize that there has, have been many advantages that, that Afghan women have taken advantage of, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes to their, uh, to their to, uh, associated with the threat to their security, uh, but very brave and willing and determined to move forward. What they don't want to see is that uh, these gains are traded away, as I said, that they're not put on the table as part of any peace and re reconciliation process, that there is time for them to continue to advocate and fight for those gains and for them to take hold uh, in Afghan society in a way that's real. And then from there, uh, you can grow it out. But uh, so just more over and over again, just heard a real concern that while they recognize their there is a need for a peace and reconciliation process. Also very concerned that we as a government would not support their insistence, uh, Afghan women's insistence on being part of the peace and reconciliation process, and also that we would uh, always be very insistent uh, that women's gains not be no negotiated away. And I think all of us members of Congress mm -hmm. who visited, we were all women uh, as a group, understand that. and. Um, and are committed to continuing to be a voice uh, for Afghan women as, as this process moves, forward, moves and, forward. And how will the Afghan Women's Task Force will help this process? Well, I think our Afghan Women's Task Force today, for example, by mm -hmm. bringing people who are so engaged in the country, bringing them to the table and allowing them, one, to talk about the challenges, mm -hmm. uh, because they are very real, as we certainly heard, uh, but to hear about the continued investment that the United States is making uh, at the, uh, at, in terms of our uh, non-military investments, uh, and also just to have an opportunity to discuss some of the challenges. That's one way in which we can, can for those many Americans uh, here in, in Washington who never have had the chance to travel to Afghanistan, it's an opportunity for them to hear uh, these challenges, but also the gains uh, to bring the many members of the varying members, the NGO community, government leaders, whatever, to uh, into a room to, to hear how they can be helpful. It's, it's, that's at the very least something the task force mm -hmm. can do.